From the lively Medinas to the majestic Atlas Mountains, Morocco offers a wide range of culture, history and natural beauty unlike anywhere else in the world. In search of something different, we decided to join a group tour to explore our 54th country. <laughs> so we'll say stall. So we'll say kidnapped. Oh my god, be careful. We can tell it's a Netflix series, so I have to keep an eye out for it. Embarking on our first adventure in Africa, we landed in Casablanca, the beating heart of Morocco. Boasting a population of over 4 million people, Casablanca stands tall as the economic powerhouse of the nation. The following morning, we made our way to the magnificent Hassan II Mosque, a breathtaking marvel of Islamic architecture that overlooks the Atlantic Ocean. Look how big it is. This mosque is the second largest in Africa and at its full capacity can fit over 25,000 people. From there, we ventured north, immersing ourselves in the lush green landscapes and had the privilege of spending a night in the traditional Riyadh with a warm and welcoming local family. Here we learned all about the art of brewing Moroccan tea and savour our first authentic tagine. Our anticipation peaked as we approached Chef Shawan, also known as the Blue City. So we've made it to a little town called Chef Shawan, which is also known as the Blue City, if you couldn't tell behind me. All the buildings here are painted blue. Nestled amidst the Rift Mountains, this enchanting town is a mesmerising maze of blue buildings and winding alleyways. We're at the main square, this is probably the least blue place in the city. It's normally really, really busy, but because we're so early, we've literally got a place for ourselves. So the reason why all the buildings are painted blue is because they believe that God lives in the sky and the sky is blue. So by painting the buildings blue, God is always with them. And conveniently, it just happens to be really picturesque. So it brings in all tourists. So normally all these streets are just filled with souvenir shops, but obviously because we've come out so early, it's nice and quiet. You can easily get lost in all these little small streets. But it's almost a pleasure to get lost because every little street you go down is just so pretty. Like is it just dedicated colours or you just it's just free for all? I think it's any blue. That would be pretty cool. I'd be determined to have like a certain blue and obvious it's gone. You can see all the washing in the background on the roofs. <laughs> it's like cool that it's like still a quite a locally place as well as a tourist place. So cute. It's so soft. Should we take him with us on a bus? Yeah, I think everybody would be very happy with that. Can you come with us? Oh, are you going to jump onto me? Come on then. Oh, that's so cool. We've adopted a cat. Some would say stole. Some would say stole. Some, some would, would say, say kidnapped. Kidnapped. Some would say borrowed. And some would say adopted. Oh, he's okay. Same 
thoughts on the on the view? It's a bit difficult, but sure, I didn't hear him this morning as well. We didn't actually know what this height was actually going to. We didn't know if it was a viewpoint. Some people said it might have been a waterfall, but... <laughs> Little puppy was stuck up the mountain. Oh my God, be careful. <laughs> there you go, he's good, yeah. There you go, come on then. Continuing on our journey, we traverse through the historic city of Fez, steeped in rich cultural heritage and renowned for its ancient Medina. It was here we visited a local tannery, where you can see the whole process of turning hides into leather from drying to dyeing. I love that they still dye it in the traditional way. I'm not quite sure about that in pigeon paint though, to soften it, that's a bit gross. Venturing further south, our path led us to the awe-inspiring Sahara Desert, where we exchanged the comfort of hotel rooms for the simplicity of desert tents. As the sun dipped below the horizon, we embarked on a magical camel ride, tracing our way across the undulating golden sands, a moment etched in our memories forever. <laughs> Watching the sunset over the dunes was truly a magical experience and definitely the highlight of this trip. En route to our final destination, Marrakesh, we paused to spend the night in Ait Ben Hadou. A small town that's famous on the big screen, a filming location for a list of films and TV shows. Yeah, they're filming one right now. There's the trailers. We've been told it's a Netflix series, so we'll have to keep an eye out for it. <laughs> We've made it to our sunset spot. And this is it. Gladiator. Game of Thrones. Yeah. This is probably the most famous spot in the town films, I think. I just like to imagine when they were actually filming you. You can see why people choose this as a filming location. It kind of looks just like a movie set. We just entered the Medina in Marrakesh for the first time, and it so far is chaotic. Arriving in Marrakesh, we were immediately enveloped by the vibrant energy of its bustling Medina. I feel like there's so many souvenirs, but just not enough room in our cases. There's also really random souvenirs, like spoons. I don't think I've ever seen a spoon in a souvenir. Here, amidst the lively souks and bustling squares, we immersed ourselves in the sights, sounds and scents of this ancient city, savouring every moment of our unforgettable Moroccan odyssey.